going live. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear me pretty soon. I have to get my uh, second computer organized here, so give me a moment. You should be able to hear me, though. Stuck in here. All right. Let's see where I'm at here. It says I was live, so hopefully I am. Having trouble getting my com other computer working here. Oh, there I am. Okay. So is anybody um, in yet? And can you hear me okay? People are finding me. Okay, awesome. So I, I have to have a second computer when I do this. So it takes me a minute to get everybody organized. <laughs> can, is everybody hearing me okay? Kathy. Oh, hi, Kathy. Hi, Deb. Let's see who else is here. Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Kathy Brunson. See who else? Oh, all kinds of people. Lisa, Denise. Hi, everybody. It's kind of hot outside tonight. I'm I'm enjoying being inside in the air conditioning very much. Is the air conditioner bothering anybody? Can you hear it at all? I've got an air conditioner running in here because it's quite warm in my sewing room. So hopefully it's not too annoying for everybody. And you should be able to see my screen. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Cindy. Oh, Amanda and Marilyn. Hi, everybody. Now, tonight, while I'm working, if you if I don't see your comment, you might um, try um, you might try going ahead and just uh, instant message me. Um, sometimes that then I hear the noise. I have to. It's hard for me to see because I have to have two computers running to do this so I try to keep track of the comments okay but sometimes I'm looking away from the screen with the comments but when I share my screen you can, I can't see anything on the computer I'm working on so <laughs> I have to have the second one sitting to the right <laughs> hi everybody now um, just so you know they did get the July uh, PEP free designs so up here in the up here on the top where it says July 2019 designs, make sure you download those. You can't hear the air conditioner, Lori, that's good. It's really hot in my sewing room if I don't have it on, so I have to have it on. <laughs> Hi, Marsha. Cool, everybody's getting here. We got a bunch of people in here tonight. I'll wait a couple more minutes until we start. Make sure people are finding me. So has everybody been having a good day? It was kind of busy at the store this morning. It wasn't busy as busy this afternoon, but uh, sold a machine and a quilt frame today. So, hi, Lynn. Cool. Yeah, the 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 uh, comments scroll through. Well, hi, Lois. Hi, Marilyn. The um, the scroll the the comments scroll through pretty well on the second computer. So. No, I don't have a fan too, Cindy. I'm sitting like right in front of the air conditioner, so I don't need both of them. <laughs> I, I get hot very, very easily. <laughs> when I sit at my desk at the store, I actually have a fan on my desk and it's running all the time. So, but um, when I sit and when I do the sewing classes, I moved my sewing table. Hi, Judy. I uh, moved my sewing table back, and I always used to be under my ceiling fan, so I never needed a fan. But now it's back away from it, so I had to go buy a fan for my sewing table, too, because <laughs> I can't. I get too warm sitting there. So, wow, there's a bunch of people in here tonight. Okay, we're about 7.34. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm having a really good time. A second here, everything's beeping here. So just a second. Hopefully, hopefully it's not beeping for a bad reason. Okay. So 
um, when I was working on this project, I wanted to do some text. Um, when I started digitizing, the first thing I started doing was learning to do text. And um, it's a good way to start digitizing and doing simple things. You can use, um, you know, designs that are already done that you, you own to add with the text, and then it makes a great project, and it's one that you've made yourself. So um, I started doing these recipe towels, oh golly, probably over 10 years ago. It was before my mother passed away. And I did that whole set of uh, recipes from Lois's Kitchen shortly after she passed away. And because um, I just enjoyed the recipes and I was enjoying digitizing. So it was a, it was a fun way to do this. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different ways of, of um, bringing in the text. And I also wanted to show you um, a little trick that I learned with the software that makes it easier to get your text in there so you don't have to um, do so much typing. So we're going to do a little bit of both. And um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Just looking through my notes here. Okay, I think that's, I think that was everything that I was wanting to tell you before. So, uh, but anyway, this is my grandma's chocolate cake recipe. My grandmother did not write anything down when it came to recipes. So um, I've just kind of had to piecemeal her recipes together because I'm also going to do um, a design collection with my grandmother's recipes. Well, I found out later, I, she made always made this little chocolate cake and she made it with sour milk. And I've had a hard time finding a recipe with sour milk and I couldn't find it. She had it all in her head. She never wrote it down. So what I actually found, figured out by doing a bunch of reading and the cookbooks and stuff, she must have used the recipe on the Hershey's cocoa can. Yes, I have, I have eaten all of these recipes, Lynn. Um, the recipes from my mother, those are all recipes that, if you go read, um, like on the group, the two groups, I put up like, if you go look at the pictures and click into the pictures, there's a little description on every single recipe. And yes, these are the ones that we ate every day, you know, every week at Christmas time. So these are all recipes that are well tested. <laughs> my grandmother's, um, my grandmother's um, recipes are uh, going to be harder because she didn't write them down and I you know I made them oh hi Nancy did you find us Nancy it looks like Nancy found us so um but my grandmother's are gonna be harder because she didn't write them down and I know what they were and I remember what she put in them you know seeing her make them all these years but um I didn't find a lot of the recipes actually written out so I am having a little trouble she had put several of them in cookbooks though for the church and for animosa and my mother wrote them out so i have those recipes so that helped <laughs> when it came to my grandmother so anyway this is grandma's chocolate cake and it must we i finally figured out it's it's the the recipe that was on the cocoa can the hershey's cocoa can it's no longer on there i don't know how many years ago it was on there probably 50 at least my grandmother died in 1996 so she i don't remember her never not making this cake <laughs> So we're going to digitize this little cake today, and I'm going to show you how to do some text in um, in Perfect Embroidery Pro. In Perfect Embroidery Pro is really easy to do text in, and it's so fun to do these recipe towels. So I'm just going to show you how I do this when I start out. And um, if you have any questions, please, you know, I'll try to answer them as I go. Otherwise, I'll answer them afterwards. So okay, so. This is our, the software is open. I'm going to go ahead and cre create a new design. And my main page comes up. And the first thing I want to do when I do this is, you know, have to give me a second. I'm going to have to refresh my screen. I'm not seeing what you're saying. I'm trying to keep up with this, this so hopefully there's a, there's a delay in this, so hopefully you're okay. Um, my main screen comes up, and whoops, second here. I think it's working. 
You guys still hearing me okay? Um, the main screen comes up and the first thing I need to do is I need to get a hoop up here so I know how big my towel is going to be. Um, I, as doing these over the years, I have found that um, a six by 10 hoop works very well because then the towels um, lay nice and fold nicely like over an oven door or whatever you want to do. So I'm going to bring up my hoop first. So that to get a hoop up into PEP, there's a, on the left hand side over here, there is a little hoop down here. It says hoop. You're just going to click on that. And I, they're, they're going to be in millimeters, so we'll talk about that a little bit. The Brother Baby Lock, it, the 6 by 10 hoop is 260 by 160. And I need to rotate it because it comes up laying sideways. So I'm going to rotate it to 90 degrees. So it's up and down. I want it the long way. And I'm going to click OK. So then I have a hoop up on my screen. This will help me keep my design inside that hoop. Then what I want to do is I'm going to start with um, the ingredients first, and then I'm going to show you the trick with the um, actual instructions because there's a lot more words there. So I'm going to show you, um, we're going to do the ingredients first. And I'm going to type these in. So there's a couple different ways to put text in here. So there is a text tool in Perfect Embroidery Pro, I'm, and it's the letter T. So it's very easy. So it's the letter T. And I'm going to go click on it, and then I'm going to come down here into the middle of my screen somewhere. There's kind of a letter A attached to my cursor now, and I'm going to click on the screen. And it's going to put a letter A on my screen. When I get my letter A on here, it opens up a bunch of stuff over here in my properties box. Now, what we're going to do with this recipe towel is basic lettering. I'm not going to get too involved in um, a lot of the, the more advanced things with lettering tonight, but I want you to see how easy it is to, to produce these recipe towels. They're so much fun. So I've got my properties box up here on the right, and it lets me do some stuff to my text. For instance, it lets me choose the font that I want to use. Now, when I do these recipe towels, I generally use a very simple font, especially if there's a lot of instructions on it and there's a lot of words, because these letters are going to be very small. So you don't want anything too fancy. It's just not going to sew out well. So what I use normally is either like Arial or Times. Arial is a little more simple than Times. Um, it depends on if you like those serif fonts that have a little bit more uh, elegant look to them. Arial is a little more simple. But for this chocolate cake, there was a lot of words, so I decided to use Arial. So I'm going to choose Arial for my font. And, you know, if you click on this little thing, here's all the different fonts here. And there's a lot of fonts in PEP. And the ones with the letter F are their standard fonts, so I'm going to use Arial tonight. And the smallest um, size that I will use for these fonts um, normally is about a quarter of an inch. So, and in this towel, like I said, there's a lot of words, so we are going to use a quarter of an inch tonight. So, I can also change how big my letters are. So, where it says height in inches, I'm going to actually change this because I know that there are a lot of words. I'm going to put it at 0.25 inches for the height. Oh, hi, Evie. And the line spacing, there's space, per, there's space percent. We're not going to change that right now. But there's also a line spacing. And what that means is the distance between the lines, because we're going to have a bunch of lines on this towel. And um, the default setting is 25%. But I usually, on these towels, have to make it much bigger because like as as you're typing like the G's or the Y's you know they'll dip down into the next line so you don't want them to like touch each other and get all uh, lost together or connected together so this particular one I kind of had 
sometimes you have to experiment here a little bit. The line spacing on the ingredients, and that's what we're starting with. Oh, hi, Marianne. The line spacing for the ingredients, anyway, worked pretty well at 60%. So I'm going to actually change the line spacing then to 60%. And then this is sort of like a word processing program, you know, like Microsoft Word or something like that, or Google Docs or whatever you use. Um, you can align your lettering, and I can align to the center. So right now it's under align center, align left, align right. Well, you know, honestly, I want to align this to the left because I'm going to put my letters all aligned to the left. And then the next thing down, is type and type means the type of font or the type of lettering we're going to do so there's normal lettering which would be straight circle spiral monogram path vertical so there's a lot of different options these are some of the more advanced things we'll talk about at another time so we're going to use normal because i want my letters to be straight and i want them to be aligned to the left so i've got all my settings done now for my ingredients. So in order to get these in here, I'm gonna go up to this little box here where the letter A is. I'm gonna highlight the letter A and backspace, and I'm gonna start typing in my ingredients. So if you give me just a second here, I gotta get my paper a little closer to me. So the ingredients for grandma's chocolate cake are two thirds cup butter, Softened. Okay, and then you can hit enter just like you can, you know, if you're using Microsoft Word, hit enter to get to the next line. And then I'm going to go one and three quarter cups sugar. And you, you try to, to make sure that you spell everything correct. Correctly, I should say. I need three eggs. Oops, forgot the space. Eggs. Going to hit enter after eggs. One teaspoon, teaspoon, can't spell tonight, sorry, spoon, vanilla extract. I'm going to hit enter to go down to the next line. Two cups flour, uh, one half cup cocoa, one teaspoon baking powder. I'm just I'm just typing just like I would on oh, hi Lori. Uh, we need three quarter teaspoon baking soda. Uh, one half teaspoon salt. One and one half whoops second here didn't get that right one half cups sour milk now like i said this was a sour milk recipe so i missed how you got the optimize button i'm not sure what that means lisa i mean the left to right order oh the 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 align it's a line I'm aligning to the left down here. Now, the reason I didn't send you guys the recipe for this is I figure you have a recipe of your own that you can use. So that's why I didn't send you this recipe because it's, I mean, recipes are all gonna be, you know, fairly standard. So um, this is just how I would do it and how I would type the instructions in. So that's why I didn't send you my recipe to do because I figured you could probably find one of your own. Okay, so I got the one and a half cup sour milk. I'm gonna hit enter one more time. And I am going to type in, there's a little preface on this. To, it, to, I told you how to sour the milk. And I remember my grandma doing this. Um, I'm gonna put the little star there to sour milk. Uh, use four and one half teaspoons. Spoons, oops, can't spell the right. Uh, white vinegar. I remember her doing this in the kitchen. She would go and get this little, she had this little white cup that she used for all this kind of stuff. She made thickening with it. This is how she soured her milk. She'd go get this cup and then she'd put her vinegar in it. 
vinegar plus milk to equal one and one half cups. So that's how she did it. She would just take her, the four, four and a half teaspoons or the whatever she put in there, white vinegar, and then add the milk to it. So that's how she would sour her milk. So that's all of the ingredients for the cake. So I have my settings made. And then all I have to do is go down here to the bottom and click apply and see what happens. It's pretty cool. So apply. Oh my, well, we might have a little problem. Um, looks like that last sentence is a bit long. So let's do a little, we'll have to do a little work here. So if this happens and you can't see the whole thing, what you need to do is you go up here to the top where it says the percentage. Oh yeah, that you can also do buttermilk. It, it was like a buttermilk thing, but she always did the sour milk. Okay, so when um, when I go into my when I, when I get this big, huge, long thing here, this is this obviously not going to fit on my towel. So I'm going to go up here where it says 61% at the top, and I'm going to click on the little arrow. This also works if you lose something on your um, screen. You can't find it. So if you go up here and go down to fit, and as Kathy Quinn always used to say, to fit is our friend. So we'll go to fit, and then I can see my hoop, and I can see the lettering. So I'm going to deselect that so you can see it. And obviously, we need to do a little work here. So I'm going to look at my towel that I had here. I can't remember where I had to do my, my enters. But we're going to take that long, long line, and we need to get it to fit on our towel. So let's go ahead. I'm going to grab my selection tool. I'm going to pull this over so that I kind of know where I want it roughly on the towel so I know where how I can fix this long line. So to do that, I've got it selected. I'm going to go back up to where I was typing. So see, here's my properties box on the right again. All that's back up there. And I'm going to go down to that last line. Okay, now I want, I, I kind of figured this out earlier, that's why I did this in advance. To sell the milk, colon, use four and a half. The word four and a half, that's where there needs to be an enter. So I'm going to enter after the words four and a half so that I have, I'm going to split that big long line up. And then I also figured out that I needed to split it up after the words white vinegar plus. So here is those words, white vinegar plus. I have to go put my cursor there. I'm going to hit an enter there. And milk to equal one and a half cup. Oh, I spelled something wrong, didn't I? Guess what? PEP -E does not have spell check, just so you're aware. Now, this is a problem for me because I'm a terrible speller. So I can fix this now, too. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that T out of there because I got a T in there and I'm going to put the S at the end. So I now have, I think, the correct um, line alignment to fit on my towel. So let's go ahead. After we made our changes, I'm going to hit apply at the bottom. Let's see how we did. Oh, boy, that looks much better. So let me do, we're going to go back up to the top again, where now it says 37%. I'm going to go ahead and click to fit. So it'll bring it into the center of the screen a little bit better. And we can look at this a little bit more fully. I am actually going to see if I can zoom in a little bit so you might be able to read it a little better maybe to about 75%, there we go. So let's look at this very carefully to see if I have everything spelled correctly. Two thirds cup butter softened, I think that looks right. One and three quarter cups sugar, three eggs, one teaspoon vanilla extract, that looks right. Two cups flour, 
one teaspoon baking powder, two thirds, or sorry, three quarter teaspoon baking soda, one half teaspoon salt, one and a half cups sour milk. And then two sour milk, use four and a half teaspoons white vinegar plus milk to equal one and a half cups. So it looks like I did pretty well that time. Let's go back up here to the top to fit. So we can see the whole uh, hoop and the letters. So that looks like it will fit on there quite nicely. I could have actually made the two sour milk use four and a half teaspoons. I could have made that a little longer, but I like to keep my ingredients usually a little narrower than the instructions. So the instructions are going to go basically from side to side of the hoop. So I usually try to keep the ingredients a little bit um, shorter than that to make it kind of a designation between the two. But let's make this bigger again and let's look at the line spacing. Looks pretty good. This was 60%, remember, if I, if I uh, use my selection tool and select my text again. We can check our settings over here as well. So my line spacing was 60%. My height was um, 0.25 inches or a quarter of an inch. Where is the top of the ingredient? Oh, it is um, one half cup cocoa, Denise. There's one half cup of cocoa in it. And then, you know, you so I, I check these settings to make sure everything looks good. Things are not like on top of each other. I did notice a little bit, let me deselect this, my baking soda and the baking powder. These two words, the G comes down a little bit on baking, like the top of the I. I might change that and make it a little bit taller. I could make it maybe 65%, uh, but when I went to put the ingredient or the when I went to put the instructions in, it was a little bit tight, so I left it a little narrower. I normally try to make sure that I don't touch any of these letters. Um, sometimes the towels I actually use 100% for the line spacing. Um, to make them tall enough, but those recipes are usually shorter and I can make the letters just a little bit bigger. So it just depends on what you're doing. Um, that's why I wanted to digitize this in advance so I knew instead of just trying to guess in front of you what I was doing. So, okay. So we have our ingredients. Now, as you can see, it's very easy to make a mistake because I'm sitting here looking at my recipe very closely and I'm thinking, I think I got it right, you know. So I do a lot of proofreading here. But I'm gonna show you a trick to help you with this. And I I've, I've, I learned to do this um, some time ago and it works really well in this software. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply here and deselect that so you can see it a little bit better without the green on it. And I'm gonna show you my little trick for the instructions at the bottom. There's a lot of words there. And like I said, I make a lot of spelling mistakes. I'm a terrible speller. So what I learned I could do, I'm gonna minimize my embroidery software. I'm gonna go in and when I do recipes, this is what I do for every recipe I make. I make a lot of recipe towels. So I open up my word processing program, you know, whatever works for you, you can use. Um, I happen to use this really, really old one called Microsoft Works. It's been around for years. I just happen to use, still use it. It works fine, simple, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. So what I do is I go into my recipes and I type my recipes into a word processing program first before I do anything. Then, guess what? It has spell check because Jan's a bad speller. So what I did, these are all the recipes I'm going to do with my grandma's. There's about, um, I think I've got about nine, eight or nine now. So I've been typing them into this word processor, just typing them in so I have them, you know, kind of ready. And I can tell if I spelled them correctly. 
So let's see, there's a good cherry dessert, apple crisp. My grandmother made great panucci. So we're gonna have a panucci recipe. And the, oh, here's, here's grandma's chocolate cake. So here's the chocolate cake recipe that I typed in. And I could have done this for the ingredients, but I wanted to show you both ways. So we typed in the first one ourselves. The second part, I can have, I've typed this into my word processor, I've saved it, so I have it. All I have to do now is I can copy the instructions, so I can right click and copy, and this is in my word processing program. Then I'm going to minimize that and bring open my digitizing software again. And, so it's just kind of sitting there on the desktop. Whoops, this is what happens to me all the time. I lose my design. That's why I love to go up here to fit. And then I can find it again, because I do that all the time, that I lose it. So I'm ready to put in the actual instructions. So what I'm gonna do is go up and get my T for text again, my text tool. And I'm going to come back down here on the, the design page somewhere and just click, and then there's that letter A again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my settings. Now this one I did just slightly different. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to use Arial still because it's a very, there's a lot of words to this. The height, I'm going to stay with 0.25 inches. And this time, I was able to put the line spacing a little further apart because there were a lot of, um, like, letters down below the letter line. And um, so I was having a little trouble getting the letters not to be, like, on top of each other. So I did use the line spacing here of 75%. And then, again, I want to align. Instead of center, I'm going to use left. And I'm going to use the type of normal again. And then at this point, I've got all my settings done. Now this is magic. When I found this out, this was like the best way to do this. I'm gonna highlight that letter A, backspace, and then right there in that little box in the properties, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to paste. And all the letters show up and it's like, Hallelujah, you don't have to type them all. So when I do recipe towels, this is how I do them. I do everything with the copy and paste. I'll, I'll have typed them into my word processor and then just save them. And then I go in here and do this because I make so many spelling errors otherwise. <laughs> so hopefully um, everybody can figure out how to do this because it's so easy. Okay, but if I do this right now, so I've got it in there, right? Okay, I'm gonna click apply and show you what happens. It's a little scary. So we're gonna hit apply. And now I have this really long thing that comes down on the screen. Well, obviously that's not going to fit in our towel because we have about that six inch area there. So we have to fix this. And I, I did a lot of playing around with this um, over the weekend, and I know where the um, enters need to be to drop down to the next line. So the way to do this is to experiment with it, and it's not hard. It's just like um, formatting, you know, in your Microsoft Word. You know, if you need to format things and have them fit in a certain area, you do the same thing. So I'm going to select my second section here and that I and I'm going to pull it over there towards the, the left so that I know about where it's going to be so I can see where I need to put my enters in so I did actually cheat a little and I wrote them in my instructions here so that I know where they are to help us out so it won't take as long okay so here's our instructions heat oven to 350 degrees Grease, that's where an enter needs to go because I played around with this. So I'm going to put my cursor right under the word grease, behind it, I should say, and hit enter. All right. 
and flour to nine inch round baking. There needs to be another one after the word baking before pans. So we're gonna put the cursor there and hit enter. Then uh, pans is on that line. Beet, butter, sugar, eggs, and. Let's see. Beet, butter, sugar, eggs, and. So I'm going to put the cur my cursor right after and and hit enter. And like I said, when I do these, I have to do a little experimenting around. You know, I have to kind of do this, and then sometimes I hit apply. So let's hit apply. I'll hit apply and kind of see how it looks. Okay, we'll see. I've got some mistakes yet down here. Okay. So like grease and flour to nine inch round. Well, then I've got this enter and then I've got baking over here. Well, I need baking to be up on the line above that. So we need to go back and fix it. So I'm going to select this again and find and flour to nine inch round baking. Okay, so I need to go down here and find pans. Baking pans, let's see, where did our end up baking? Oh yeah, so we need to do pans. And it needs to come up, so I'm gonna put the cursor in front of pans and hit backspace. And a space to put that in there. Let's hit apply again. And we'll look to see if we got that one fixed. That looks pretty good. Let's look at it though. Where are we here? And flour two nine inch round. Oh, and I need the word baking up. So we're still not quite there. So let's go back up here. Baking needs to be up on the line behind the word round. Oops, a second here. Didn't get my cursor down in front of baking. So let's try that. Bring it up. Backspace. And then let's hit apply. Okay. But now, see, now we've got all this long words again. So we don't need that. We need the enter to be after the word baking. So let's go ahead and click on there again. And baking. Yeah, we want pans down on the next line. So let's do. Get the, there we go, our cursor there and hit enter. And then hit apply and let's see how, if we, that worked better. Oh yeah, there we go. So I think that's better. So I've got and flour to nine inch round baking. Yeah, baking pans, beet, butter, sugar, eggs, and and vanilla in large bowls. So that's on the next line. But I need until fluffy also up there. So see, until fluffy is down here, and I need it up here. So let's go ahead and click click on it again. Let's go find until fluffy. Okay, here's until fluffy. I'm going to put my cursor in front of that, and I'm going to backspace and hit one space so that there's a nice space there. And hit apply again. I I do apply a lot so that I can kind of see where I'm at. Otherwise, it's difficult with all these words to see where you are. So it looks pretty good. Beet, butter, egg, sugar, eggs, and vanilla in large bowl until fluffy. Fluffy is the last word in that particular sentence. So I need to go up there and get all these other words down on the next line. So let's go ahead and select it again. Let's find the word fluffy, okay, and then combine. So we're going to put the cursor in front of the word combine and hit enter. And again, I usually will do, maybe I might do another one. Let's try, okay. see, combine flour, cocoa, baking powder. Let's see, cocoa, baking powder. After the comma, we're going to have another enter. So we get that in there see if that works and then let's hit apply again. I have to hit apply quite often when I'm doing this because you, you have to kind of see where you're where you're at. So see I'm getting better. I've got baking powder then baking soda is on the next line but I need some of this next line up there. So let's do this again. Baking let's see here. 
Got to go down a little ways. Combined flour baking powder. Baking, I have to see which line is which here, just a second. Baking powder, baking soda, and salt. So, and salt, oops, sorry. And salt. Let's see here. And salt, there we go. Put my cursor in front of that. We need to get it up with the baking soda. So we're going to hit backspace and a space to put a space there. And I'll probably just hit enter or hit apply again so I can see. That looks pretty good. Baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Add alternately. So then I need another uh, enter after the word alternately. So let's. Select like this again. And this is a process. It just takes, you know, as you get better at doing this, it just takes a little time to get it the way you want it. Okay, so add, let's see here. I'm going to go back there and hit enter. Alternately with sour milk. So let's see how we did there. That looks better. Baking soda and salt add alternately oh i think alternately needs to go up after the word add so i didn't quite get that right let's see here looking for the word alternately yeah because alternately needs to be up next to the word add so let's go with that oops secretary still didn't get it there we go let's hit apply again Oh, I think maybe we got it this time. There we go. Alternately is there. And then I need a, a return after the word alternately. Let's find that again. Alternately. Oops. Did I miss it? I think I missed it. Alternately with. So I'm going to put a, my cursor right before the word with and hit enter. And then the supply again. This makes it easier if you apply regularly, do the apply button regularly, because then you can see, you know, where you're kind of at. So alternately with sour milk to butter mixture. And then there's going to be another enter. So butter mixture. So let's see here. Alternately with sour milk to butter mixture. Okay, so I think mixture, then there's going to be another enter. So let's put our Cursor there and hit enter. Okay, and then, whoops, see, I think beating, yeah, beating just until smooth. So let's see what, how we did there. Oh, got just one word there, so we need to go fix that now. So just until smooth needs to come up. Let's go find that. I kind of work down one line at a time because it, it is a little hard to see where you're at. Is this making sense to everybody? It's just formatting. You just have to kind of get it to fit. So just until smooth, pour batter. So let's see where we are there. All right, so we're, we're getting close. So I've got beat just until smooth, Pour batter. So I want to. I want another um, enter after the word batter. Let's see here. Whoops. Push the wrong button on my computer. Well, let's see. After the word batter. Pour batter. Okay. Into there we go. So let's put a, a enter after the word batter. I think that looks good. Hit apply again. Oh, we're getting close here. We got a couple lines to do. Pour batter into prepared pans. Bake 30 to 35. Okay, we're getting close here, guys. Okay, bake 30 to 35 minutes. I think we're down there. So minutes is what we can't see it. Let's let's bring it a little bigger so we can see it. Having a little trouble seeing it. So 75%. Let's go down here. All right. Pour batter into prepared pans. Bake 30 to 35 minutes. That's on the next line. Cool 10 minutes. 
remove. So I need another enter after the word remove. So let's go back. Let me select it. After the word remove. Let's see. Cool 10 minutes. Oops. Let's see here. There we go. Cool 10 minutes. Remove. So we need an enter after the word remove and hit enter. from pans who will completely be for frosting. So let's see, I think we're getting pretty close. We might need one more enter yet. Yes, we need to get the word before up to the next, to the word completely. So let's go ahead and go down here towards the bottom. Let's see, cool 10 minutes removed from pans, cool completely before. So we want another enter after the word before. Put my cursor there and hit enter. And then let's hit apply. Whoops, well now it's really messed up. I need before up under completely. So let's try this again, shall we? I'm gonna hit undo is my other friend. The little backspace here, I'm gonna undo that so that I can get before back up there. I need it up on the line ahead of it. So let's go back down here at the bottom before. Oops, let's see, I haven't found it yet. Remove completely before. So I need the word before up next to the word completely. So I'm gonna put my cursor and I'm gonna put a backspace and hit apply. Let's see if we got it here. Oh, I did, cool. And then I want the word frosting on the next line. It'll be down there by itself. There we go, before, and then I'm gonna put a, my cursor there, and I'm gonna hit enter, and click apply one last time. I think we might have gotten it. Ooh, that looks pretty good. All right, so this is a little bit of a process. So when you're doing these long lines, and like I said, the six by 10 hoop, the reason I choose it is because I use um, the Aunt Martha's, um, what do they call them, vintage towels. I like those and you can get them at Joann's. And I think they might even have them at Hobby Lobby. And they look really nice and they sew out really nicely on those towels. And then when you wash them, they look kind of antiqued. So I really like those, but they're not real super wide. So the six by 10 hoop is a really nice size because it met, lets the towel fold nicely and lay over like, if, I, I always have one hanging over like the oven, the oven door, you know, and they, they hang real nice and you can see the entire design because I don't want them to be so big you can't see the whole recipe at the same time, so. Okay, so we looks like we did pretty well. Now you can see how I was doing that. I was just going back and forth. I'd click apply. I'd go back and check my, my spacing. So my, my goal is here is for this all to fit within my hoop. And let's go ahead and to fit again up here so that I can bring this down. And so here is my ingredients and here are my instructions. So let's bring these up. So if they're inside the hoop here, whoops, not quite. Okay. Do you use wash away stabilizer? No, I do not, Denise. I'm going to talk about the stabilizer in a few minutes. So I will tell you how I sew these out because they are got a lot of stitches in them because there's a lot, usually a lot of words. So I'll talk about the stabilizer in a minute. Okay. So I've got my two paragraphs here. And so what I'm going to do, I would like those two paragraphs to be um, even on the left. So there's a way we can do that with the software. I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to hold the control key down on my keyboard, and I'm going to select the second one. Then I am going to go to the top, up to the toolbars above, and there's a whole bunch of little line tools up here. There's a, they look like little boxes with arrows in them. And I want to choose the first one because that's align to the left. So if I click on that, those two items will then align to the left. You probably didn't notice them moving, so let me, let me just move it over so you can see it. So I'm gonna move that one over and I'm going to select the second one. 
and I'm going to choose that first alignment line left. And that way they're aligned on the left hand side and they're perfectly aligned. Now I think I need to have this a little closer. My ingredients need to be a little closer to my instructions. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to um, disrupt my alignment that I just did. So if I select that and hold my control key down, the little arrow keys on your um, computer uh, keyboard will allow you to go down without getting it out of alignment. So instead of pulling it down, I'm going to use my little arrow keys and I'm going to bump it down. And it goes straight down so that I don't have, um, so I don't get it out of alignment. And I think I like that better. They need to be relatively close together because I need to put something else up at the top. So I think I like that. And there's my two. Um, my instruction or my instructions and my ingredients. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to bring a design into this so I have something on my towel besides just words. Now, when I started doing these, and this is why I would recommend people do these, there are a ton of designs out there. You own designs, there are a ton of designs in the software. If you go up here to the letter T where it says text designs up here and click on the letter T, it looks like a T with a book on it, you will get a ton of designs. There's tons of things in here. A lot of them, you know, some of them may work for your recipe towers, some may not, but these are all in the software already and all completely digitized. So that's one place you can get those. Um, another place is, Remember all those free designs that they've been giving you all these months? To, to access those, down at the bottom, underneath the sequence view here, there's a little book, and it's that's where the designs are. And there's tons of free things here, free designs. You also got a ton of free designs with the software. So you can go in there, and if you give me a second here, I just need to pull this up so you can see the see the actual pictures. And there's just tons of designs in here. So there might be something here that would work for your recipe towel. You know, you may have already bought something that looks like a piece of cake. Use that. That's how I started digitizing these. I didn't digitize my own um, graphics. I just used something I already had and did the lettering. So it makes it a lot easier and, um, and you can move along with these much quicker. But this particular one, I wanted this piece of chocolate cake on it, and I did digitize a piece of chocolate cake some years ago for someone else's chocolate cake recipe, and I am going to use that. And you would bring in the design that you're choosing the same way. So what I'm going to do is I want to merge that in to my present design. If I go File, Open, or just the little Open button up here, and then go choose my cake. I want to sh show the difference. It's on my desktop right now in, in the folder that says Grandma's Chocolate Cake. So here's my chocolate cake. I'm just going to click on that and click Open. Well, if I go File Open, look, that's the only thing that's left that's on my design page because it is it. We, I opened it into a new. So if you use Open, you will only have the chocolate cake, but I want it in my other design that I've already started working on. So if I click down here, you can have more than one thing open at once. So see, I have my cake here, but if I go back down at the bottom, there's another little tab that says design one. That's the one we were working on. So I'm going to go back to that so you can see there's my recipe. To get my cake into this without having to copy and paste, I'm going to go up to file and merge. So then what it will do is I'm going to go find that same um, folder on my desktop and find my same piece of chocolate cake and then I'm going to hit open and now my chocolate cake comes into the design page that I was already using and that's how you have to do that if you want to have if you're going to bring in multiple designs to the same page, you need to use File, Merge. If you want to open a new page, you use File, Open. So hopefully that 
explains that because a lot of people ask me that question. Okay, so I have merged my chocolate cake into my typing that I had already done. So there's my chocolate cake. And like I said, I did digitize this, but just use something you already have. I did that for years making these recipe towels and just found a design I already had and I didn't have to digitize it. I just had to do the lettering. Okay, so we have one last thing that we need on our, on our recipe towel. We need uh, a headline, you know, we need a title. So I'm gonna go back to my text tool. So I'm gonna go back to my letter T. There we go. And I'm gonna, I've got the little cursor and has the letter A on. I'm just gonna go down here and click on the, the design page somewhere. And it brings up my properties box. And give me a second here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull down the designs thing so you can see my apply button. My computer's rather small, so I have to do this a lot. All you have to do is hover your mouse over the line here, and you can pull this up and down so you can see things. My computer's really got a small screen, so, okay? So I'm ready to put in my title. My title, um, I'm gonna find my piece of paper a second here. My title, was going to be something a little larger. I want the letters to be a little larger here, of course. And um, I was not able to make them real big because again, there's a lot of words on here. So I'm going to make my title, I wanna call it Grandma's, Grandma's, if I can spell. And then I want these to be three lines. So I made it Grandma's Enter, Chalk, Go late, <laughs> enter, cake. And I capitalized the first letter of each one. Then I'm going to go down here and I decided the height of these should be about 0.45 inches. That was what fit pretty well. So again, the line spacing um, was 25%. I left this one at the um, default because it seemed to work well. And then I, this one, the alignment, I want it to be centered. So I'm gonna have the three lines and I'm gonna center them on each other. So I'm gonna leave this at align center. And again, this is going to be normal. I'm not gonna make it curved or a circle or anything. And now I'm just gonna hit apply. And if I deselect that, there is grandma's chocolate cake. Well, I just realized I didn't change my font. So I selected it again, and I do want to use a different font. There's a lot of really pretty fonts in here. Um, the manual, just so you know, does have a printout of all the fonts in it, so you can look and see what they look like. And there are really, really nice fonts, and they all sew out really well. So I, I love the fonts in this software. I'm gonna go down here, and I kind of played around with them a little bit, and the one that I liked was called Casual. So I'm going to click on the word casual, and then you can kind of see a representation of what it looks like in the box here now. And then I'm gonna click apply again. And it's gonna change my font to a different one. And I'm gonna grab it here with my selection tool, and I'm gonna pull it up onto my recipe towel. Now I think I still need to alter my, um, my instructions and stuff a little bit. So I'm gonna go down and select the bottom one. I need to move it down just a little bit. So I, I selected it with my selection tool, hold your control key down, and then those little arrow keys on your keyboard again, I'll just bump it down just a little bit. Can't go down too much because we don't wanna touch that boot down there. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do the same thing to the ingredients. I'm gonna select it. I'm going to hit control and then I'm going to just bump this down because that way my alignment stays intact. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. That looks better. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay. And then grandma's chocolate cake. I couldn't really, I tried playing around with the size and if I made it a little bigger then it was too big for the cake to fit in here. And the other thing too, did you notice 
I'm going to move my letters out of here for a second. Did you notice when I clicked on the cake, it's all in pieces? And me being me, I will have those like scattered all over the place. So I'm going to do, I'm quickly going to do this and show you how to group. I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to push my mouse button down and I'm just going to draw a box around the entire cake area. That's why I moved the letters out of the way. They're all selected now and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to the word group. That way the cake is all in one piece because if I don't do that, I will lose part of my cake. So I, I like to group my designs. And when you bring in a purchase design, it may also be ungrouped. So just be careful you don't lose a part of it when you're moving things around, okay? So the size of my little cake was good because I had digitized this for another recipe towel. So it was good, so I don't have to change it. But if you need to change the size of your design, if you select it, and now I've got a different properties up here in the properties box. There's an arrow at the top here, right here. And there's a little button that says transform. That's where you change the size of your design. And when you give it a different size here, it will recalculate the stitches and add or subtract stitches for you. Then the software automatically does that. Um, Underneath the, the like the, the size here, it says regenerate stitches and that is selected or, or checked there. If you do not want to recalculate stitches for some reason, deselect that box. But that's where you change the size of your designs. Okay, so I think we're getting about done here. So I've got my little cake on there, he's grouped. And I'm gonna bring my lettering back in. And I think I need to move my cake over here just a little bit and maybe down just a little bit. Looks better. Can you close the spacing between the D and M on grandma? Yes, you can. It was a little bit big. I noticed that after I sewed it out. It doesn't look bad when it's sewn out, but yes, you can. To do that, uh, Lynn, what you would do is select that area. And then go over and, and get your text tool again. And let's bring this up so you can see it better. See now all of these little, there's like all these little arrows and little boxes and everything. If you need to move these two letters just slightly closer together, there's a little blue kind of a diamond shape, and I'm gonna grab that with my cursor, and I have my text tool selected to do this. I'm gonna grab that cursor, and I'm gonna pull that in just slightly. I think that looks better. What do you think, Does that look better? Or if you wanna just do, like I wanted to bring the whole thing, because the whole thing seemed a little far apart for some reason on the right. I brought the whole thing in. If you grab then the black box in the middle of the M, you can just move the one letter back and forth. So see, I'm just moving, like if I want it up here, I could put it up here. So that's, that's what's cool about this software. There's so many ways to move your fonts around, your letters around and stuff. So I don't want my M actually hanging out in space up there. So I'm going to hit my undo button so that it goes back down where it was but I think that looks better. There's still a little space between the A, like the L-A-T-E. So let's go in and see if I can get that one to move just a little bit too. It's just a little bit strange. That looks a little bit better. That's kind of moving it, the whole letter. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better too. So that's how you would do, if you need to play with individual letters, we'll get more into this in the next, in, the, in one of the other lessons, but, that's how you have to have your your text tool selected and then select your text and that's how you get all of these little boxes that come up and give you all these other options of things you can do with them okay if you just have your selection tool selecting your design you don't have all those little boxes and stuff does that make sense to everybody hopefully that that answered that question for you lynn Okay, 
So the last thing I do when I do these is I like to then change the colors so that my colors are the way I want them to be, okay? So I know my chocolate cake had certain colors in it, and those colors came in with the piece of chocolate cake. But what I would like to do is I want to make my grandma's chocolate cake, the, the, the title, I want to make it red. So I'm going to select it, and we did this in the last lesson. We did a little bit of color changing. I'm going to go down here to number two, just use number two, and I'm going to, I left clicked on it, brought up my box with all my Floriani colors. I am going to go into the search button and I'm going to, I know I want to use 703 red. That was the color I liked it to be. And I'm going to click OK. Still have Grandma's chocolate cake highlighted. Now to get that to be color number two, I am going to right click and it will change the color of Grandma's chocolate cake. Deselect it to see the color change. So there's the red. I would like that. And the first set of letters I made of blue. And I had a real pretty kind of a royal blue. My grandma's favorite color was blue, so I wanted it to have some blue in it. And let's go back to color number one and change it to the, the blue that I want it to be. It was a blue, but I would like it to be um, number 367. It's kind of a pretty royal blue. It's called Blueberry, and then I'm going to click OK. I've got my ingredients selected, and I'm going to right-click on number one. And then it will change my letters to 367, which is my, um, my pretty blue color. Now, sometimes I have to, and I apologize, at the bottom of the screen, on top of some of the colors, you're seeing that word that says stop sharing. That's the sharing thing, and I can't move that, so I apologize. Um, I think I might be able to hide it, but sometimes it gets cranky if I do that, so I'm not going to hide it. So um, I like to get rid of some of the, the color boxes down here that I'm not using. So I kind of know where I'm at with my colors. So it's very easy to do that. If you go along the bottom line here where all the color boxes are, all the way to the right, there's a plus sign and a minus sign. The minus sign removes all the extra colors that we're not using. So I'm going to click on the minus sign and now I'm down to just the colors that I'm using in the design, which is awesome because then I don't have so many colors. And there's one other color I would like to change. I'm going to scroll down here. Whoops, we're going to have to go to fit again because I lost my design. I would like Grandma's chocolate cake to be red. We got that. I already had the colors set in my chocolate cake because it was, a, it was my design that I digitized. Um, I would like the top letters to be blue, but I want these bottom ones to be one of the colors in the cake. So I chose one of the browns, and it was 745. So I'm going to select the bottom, um, the instructions, and I'm going to go look down here for number 745. It's number two now. And I'm going to right click on that because that was already in the design and change that to my brown. So there's my red um, headline. My cake is all in there and it's there's about three colors or four colors in the cake and then my red letters and my blue letters. Okay, so there's all the letters and all my colors are changed the way I want them. My goal was when I made these recipe towels, um, years ago when I started making them, um, I had a six needle machine. And my goal was to do these so I did not have to change the colors. So most of my uh, recipe towels have about six, five or six colors in them. So I can just load the machine one time and sew the whole towel out. So I, that's where I, what I kind of shoot for. You can have as many colors as you want, but I, I was lazy and didn't want to change the colors. Okay, so the recipe towel is done. We need to save it. So I'm going to save it two ways. I am going to save it as a C2S file. That is the working file that I need to go back to to um, 
fix anything. Like if I find that I've got a, a misspelled word or whatever, I need to have that file. So I'm going to go up to File, Save As, and I'm going to put this just down on my desktop since I've already done this. But I'm going to call it uh, Chocolate Cake or how about Grandma's Chocolate Cake. Grandma's Chocolate Cake. And then I'm going to leave it Save As Type the Inspiration Series C2S. So it's very important that you save this because that's your working file that you will go back to to work on it again if you need to. And I'm going to click Save. So it's just going to save on my desktop. And you, you'll tell it where you want to save it. I'm going to save it on my desktop. And, whoops, second here. There we go. Save it on my desktop. Hopefully I did, got it there. Let me see. I'll go look. Don't know if it made it there or not. Not sure if it made it there. For some reason, it didn't make it. So let's try it again. We'll go File, Save As, Grandma's Chocolate Cake. So let's do Desktop, Grandma's Chocolate. Let's see if I can spell that right. Cake. There we go. And then hit Save. For some reason, it wants to go back into my folder, so we're just going to not save it right now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. For some reason, it keeps cho choosing my other folder, so file save as desktop. Let's just put it somewhere else. Let's put it into my documents so you can see me save it. Sorry. I haven't had this do this before. It's probably because I need an update or something, and it's trying to, to think about an update. So let's do this. Design one, grandma's uh, chocolate cake. So you got to see, see me save it three times. Okay. And it's C2S. This is our working file. And click save. So I just put it in my documents. There it went. Finally went. Okay. Then I need to also have a file in order to sew. So I need that to be a PDS file for my machine. And I need to go back up to File, Save As. And I'm going to leave the same title. That's fine. But I need to go Save As Type. I'm going to choose a different format. I am going to choose. Now, there's two different ways to do this. I sew these very often on my multiple needle machine. So I usually choose Baby Lock Brother Multi-Needle PES version 9. That's usually what I choose just because I sew these so often on my multiple needle. If you want, if you're not, don't have a multiple needle, just use Baby Lock Brother Bernina PES version 9 if you don't have a multiple needle like I do. So I usually choose the multi-needle one just because it's hard to explain, but it, 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 it thinks about the colors differently when, it, when, it, it, when you're ready to put it in the machine. And if you choose that and you just have a home machine, it doesn't matter. But I often choose that one just to help me. So I'm going to choose that one, and then I'm going to put it in my documents and just click Save. So that's what we have to do to get it saved to sew it. We have to use our C2S, and we want that file too, but then you have to save it as a PES because your sewing machine does not know what a C2S is. Okay, so we're ready now to um, stitch out our recipe towel. So we need, Denise had a question a little bit ago about stabilizer. Um, I sew these towels usually on those Aunt Martha's um, vintage towels. And um, they, they sew up really nicely. They're, and they have a lot of different colors. Should you have it as multi and not? I usually just choose multi, Lisa, because I sew them on both machines and the multi is fine. Sometimes what happens when you choose multi needle and you sew it on your home machine, you have to flip it, you know, like 90 degrees because it'll come up on the screen laying down. Does that make sense? That's usually the only thing that I notice. So I have to, I have to stand it up right for the hoop. So I usually just use multi-needle because then I can sew it on either one. Um, the colors come up better then. So, okay. So um, to sew these, 
I use those vintage, you know, and you can use any kind of nice towel, but these towels are always been nice ones I've used. And I use um, a iron on a fusible tearaway stabilizer of some sort. My favorite one is um, Floriani Stitch and Sh Stitch and Wash is what it's called. Stitch and Wash. Stitch and Wash is um, a tearaway, but it has some um, water or like dissolvable properties. So as you wash these, um, it will slowly disintegrate the the back stabilizer. So, so there's so many little words and stuff on these that I like that property of it. So I iron one piece onto the towel. I hoop these too. I don't normally um, float these. You can if you want to. And then I, so I hoop these, I iron one piece on, and then I lay two pieces or I float two pieces of the um, stitch and wash without the fusible underneath. So I use three pieces of stabilizer. Like this design has 66,369 colors in a six by 10 hoop. So it does have quite a few colors or quite a few stitches. So I, you need to have a fair amount of stabilizer in there, okay? So stitch and wash, usable on the towel, and then two layers of stitch and wash the plane underneath. And that's what I've been doing. So then what I do is I stitch it out and I pull as much of the stabilizer as I can possibly get off of the towel. And then I throw them into the washing machine and wash them. So every single towel that I ever sew out, I always wash it before I either sell it or give it away. You do need to use color catchers with these towels because they like to bleed. So I put in a throw in a couple of color catchers and I wash them in cold water. And cold, cold. So that works best. And then I dry them. And when I get them dried, of course, then they're, then they are um, kind of wrinkly. So I iron them and, um, and they turn out kind of antique looking then because they have a little bit of a wrinkly look to them. So that's my favorite way to um, make these towels. So um, I'm going to put a picture up after we're done here. I've got two towels. I sewed it out two times and um, I sold out this towel twice once with standard and I had somebody else ask me this question earlier once with standard number 40 thread for the letters these letters are very small and sometimes number 40 thread is a little on the thick side for them but I normally don't really have any trouble I sew these out all the time if you're having a little trouble with the thread shredding, slow the machine down a little bit and maybe put in a number 14 needle instead of a number 11. Um, I do these on my multi-needle multi a lot, and so I really didn't have any trouble, but I did have to slow it down a little. Now today, um, we also carry the number 60 micro thread, and it really works well for tiny letters. So someone asked me on, on the group earlier if that would work better, and yes, it does. Um, so I sewed another one out today with the number 60 thread in the same colors, and um, you'll, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a picture up so you can see the difference in the way they sewed out. So there's a th distinct difference in the way the letters sewed out. Um, I also still have to slow the machine down a little. Um, for the thin thread because it wanted to break a little bit, but it only broke a couple of times. And it, I expect that when I'm doing small letters. So just expect these to maybe have a few thread breaks because of the, the tiny, tiny little satin stitches. Because quarter inch letters are really the smallest you dare go. Otherwise, there, there are some fonts that are made to be some smaller. So if you really have to have them even smaller than that, choose one of those fonts because there are a couple out there on in the software um, like there is an Arial. if i click on my area again with the area or with the text tool there's a font here called Arial four millimeter and you can really get those tiny like 0.15 or 0.16 but they're very sparse little letters 
and so they will be very very tiny so i don't use those very often the quarter inch ones work fine and these are 0.16 so let me bring these in let me zoom into these so you can see it otherwise see how tiny they are so those work if you have to do teeny tiny little letters and there are several fonts in the software that are teeny tiny like that so okay so are there any questions does this all make sense to everybody can you can you try a recipe on your own do some lettering in the software this is one of the first things I learned to do in this software when I got it. And I had to make myself not use my other software that I'd been using. So I just had to like put it away and use this. And this was one of the ways I learned. I learned by making recipe templates because it really worked well for me. And it was a way for me to learn. I do a lot of lettering. So what do you think? So everybody, does that make sense to everybody? Can you can you try making a recipe towel now? I was really looking forward to this class. I haven't done any of these for a while, and they're so much fun. So where do you space the design on the towel? Oh, on the towel? So <laughs> Denise, this is kind of hard to explain, but what I do is I put the, you know, I, I iron my stabilizer on the back. Um, and then I, I fold the towel in half and then I run the middle of the frame, you know, like right up that center line. So it's like right in the center, but I want the the lettering to be down towards the, the hem on the bottom. So I, I usually run the hoop down along the bottom hem. I use that to help me uh, get them in there straight. Oh yeah, that'd be fun to do a cookbook. We could do a whole cookbook of towels, couldn't we? Oh, Nancy, are you able to get your, your software switched over? Cool. Is the hoop size in inches anywhere? You know, Margaret, it's not. Um, the, the one thing about PEP is they don't put the hoop size in inches. I don't know why. You know, when you bring the hoop up, it's always in millimeters. So the hoop size for 6 by 10 is is um, 260 by 160. That's the six by 10 hoop. Okay. Back in here, I gotta scroll down so I can see some of the comments. Did I miss anything? And I'll go back and look at the comments later in case I missed anything. Great class. Oh, get your software. It was, it was the inches up in the corner as you chose the hoop, at least I had it. Oh, oh you know what it is? That's something new. I, they didn't used to have it there. Um, Lisa? Yeah, you're right, Lisa. Very good. It's right up here, 6.3 by 10.2. So you want to choose it, like here's the uh, 8 by 12. So it's about 11.8 by 7.9. So yes, it is there. They added it in there. It hadn't been there before. Found this, but haven't tried to switch it. Okay. Yep, you need your, your number, Nancy, in order to get it switched over. You've got to have your, your, uh, your serial number from your old disk. So. All right, so I, I am looking so forward to seeing your, your recipe towels because I'm sure everybody has fun recipes. And I put up some of my, my mom's recipes if you want to you know, purchase some other ones to do. And they're all fun. And I'm going to work on my grandma's too and try to get them done. I got a couple more I got to find yet. So, um, but anyway, so hopefully you have fun tonight. I sure did. Yes, the Bernina hoops are also in there, Nancy. Um, they are going to be down further. Uh, yes, yeah, so here's all the Bernina ones. They're down underneath the brother ones. So yes, they are. Um, and um, so anyway, I hope that you had a nice time. I really enjoyed it. So I look so forward to these classes. And if you have any questions, let me know. And next, uh, remember, Sunday we will not have So Along with Jan. We're going to take the weekend off. And um, the next um, sessions on software with Jan will be, I think it's August, let me decide, August, got to find it, August, the first Tuesday is the 6th, I believe, yeah, August 6th, 
And I think what we're going to do for that is um, I'm going to do, we need to do a PE design class because a lot of you have PE design as well or palette. And so we're going to do a PE design class in August. So we're going to do an intro class to PE design. I'm going to be working in PE design 11, just so you know. And some of you have next, so that's fine, which is version nine, and that's fine. Um, but I'm going to do a PE design class next time. Um, and if you haven't gotten to see the photo stitch class that I did with the Baby Lock Gals, um, hopefully you can um, go watch that on, I put the links up so you can go watch it. So it, it's a really, it, it turned out really well. I was very happy with the class. It was fun. So, so yeah, so everybody have a wonderful 4th of July. Remember, we are closed the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th of July. So we're closed for a few days at the store. And um, I'm looking forward to a little time off. I'm so excited to have some time off like that. It doesn't happen very often. So, okay. Anybody else have questions? I'd love to see how to send the files directly to the machine. Let's see. Fun class, Jan. Thank you. Oh, thanks, everybody. Um, and scan and cut. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Lisa. Can you text me later about that? Okay, so if anybody um, if anybody has any questions, let me know. And um, from now on, from what is it about? Oh, it's almost nine nine o'clock. I'm sorry, I knew it would take a while to do this because it was a lot of stuff. So everybody have a nice evening and have and enjoy your Fourth of July. And I'll be seeing you um, in about a week for so along with Jan. Thank you. Have a good have a good night. Bye.